The Russians seem to be emboldened as of late. We send a lot of tough talk their way, but we are also sending a lot of cold, hard bank their way. John Ransom has been writing about it at Town Hall Finance, and he's here in studio with me right now. John Ransom, welcome back to so Smart much. Life. How could this be happening? This makes absolutely no sense to, well, to the you, average person out there. Yeah, I mean, this is a presidency of a lot of firsts, and, and this is something <laughs> yeah. that we would never, have, you know, 20 years ago. Not exactly said, the crazy. first that the Americans thought they were voting right, for. Right, right. I, I mean, 20 years ago, people have said, well, you're crazy. This never happened. At a time when Russian Russia and its surrogates has shot out a commercial airliner from the sky. We're right. still sending a hundred million dollars a year to buy a Russian rocket engines, basically, in order in order to transport our satellite stuff. When when we have providers here in the United States who are ready, willing, and able to compete for that business. Why? Uh, nobody nobody really has a, a good answer. It's one of those. What, what, those what's, the, what's the reported answer then? I mean, what's the White House saying about this? Well, the White House isn't saying anything. They're doing the they're doing what they normally do, which is just to ignore the problem okay, and hope that goes away. Somebody has to answer some questions. The on pen, this. I mean, the, the I, I realize that they're not going to tell us right. maybe the truth, but what's just the mantra? There, there, we need the we need these these rockets. It's going to take too long for us to to get these engines developed on our own, and we need them now. And you know, inside of it, it's it's a Byzantine question of Defense Department contracts, and there's a there's a contractor who has a contract that subcontracts out to the Russians, and they don't want to lose the contract, and they don't want to have to competitively bid for uh, for these. But it makes no sense because we're spending literally hundreds of millions of dollars and our entire defense uh, uh, architecture is dependent upon this because this is what brings the satellites up into space this is this is our primary launch vehicle is a Russian launch vehicle mm -hmm. right so so the contractors who are here and could be fulfilling uh, these needs and making the hundred million dollars that we're spending in Russia, uh, why aren't they making a bigger stink about this? Well, they're not going to make a stink because they do business. They want to do business with the Defense Department, so so right. they are doing the appropriate thing. They're they're available uh, for us to to. They know they understand that they just have to be quietly available mm -hmm. as a contractor, but they can't make too big of a stink about it because they don't want to upset the procurement you know process inside the Pentagon. And so it's it's really incumbent upon the Congress of the United States, and this should be a bipartisan issue. Democrats mm -hmm. and Republicans need to get together and force the president to do something. Because let's face it, Barack Obama doesn't understand defense issues, even if he wanted to pay attention to it, which he doesn't. Mm -hmm. He doesn't really understand the defense issues. So it's time for the grown-ups at the table, <laughs> and there are some grown-ups left in Congress who understand what the issue, to get together and force the children to do what they don't want to do. So the grown-ups at the table, as you call them, the yes. Congress, uh, which particular congressmen are, are making some sort of real splash about this? There, there are no congressmen making a splash about this. Now, they might be because the latest news out of Russia is that there's a cr new cruise missile test that they've done, which is a violation of a treaty that we have with Russia. And so I think they're starting to pay attention to this a little bit more. Uh, but as of this point, nobody's doing anything about it. And so so I personally am going to start writing about it, and I'm starting to call my congressman, and not just my congressman, but other congresspeople right. who have, who have uh, some say on the appropriations here, and I'm going to pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, you need to stop doing this. This is this is money that's being used. That, that $100 million is used right now mm -hmm. as direct aggression in, in, in Ukraine, and, and it needs to stop. I would think that this would be a pretty good campaign issue. I mean, if, if a congressman is confronted with these things and they refuse to do anything about it, I would think this would be a pretty good campaign issue for people. Well, I think so too, because getting past the fact that it's a national security issue, it's also jobs here at home. These are That's these are the big jobs thing. that we can we yeah. can provide here for. Look, if we couldn't provide the jobs here, if somehow we couldn't do it and we needed to buy it from Russia, mm -hmm. then it would make sense because there are things that that we buy from other countries that we have to buy. But it doesn't make any sense. Our technology is superior. We can do it cheaper. We can provide American with jo Americans with jobs. But frankly, Washington is so out of touch, so disengaged mm -hmm. from the average lives of the American people that they don't even think this way anymore.
we're not talking about the same amount of money, but this reminds me of the Keystone Pipeline, something so simple, something so uh, doable that would create jobs and that would mean something to the American economy rather than those dollars always going to our enemies. This is, this is really a theme with this administration. Well, it, it's a theme also, I think, with Washington, D.C., because I, I've calculated, and these, these numbers have been backed up by independent consulting firms, that we would add $15 trillion over a 10-year period to our economic output which would solve a whole bunch of problems. It would help with Social Security. I mean, if you really care about the poor, if you really care about welfare programs, if you really care about, about the state of uh, the economy here in the United States, and you understand that that's what's going to lift people up, then you build the Keystone Pipeline, because it's going to add significantly to our wealth here in the United States mm -hmm. without us having to do very much at all. Mm -hmm. 10 million jobs over a 10-year period and $15 trillion in, in our economy. That's double what our economy is today. Wow. Yeah. Those are some big, big They're numbers. They're huge numbers, yeah. So, so John, ultimately, um, what can the average citizen do? You said maybe call their congressman. They can read your article and understand the issue and be able to say what exactly to... Well, they need to call, the Congre they need to call their congressman. And believe me, if a congressman gets four or five phone calls from constituents in one day, it's a very bad day for them on an issue. So if you call the congressperson and you talk to their communications people and you demand, hey, we got to stop sending money over to Russia, especially mm -hmm for things that we can build here in the United States right. of America, and especially things that have to do with the defense uh, architecture here in the United States, and especially things that fund defense issues, where do, what do, you, where do you think they're getting their hard cash? Mm -hmm. Russia has a huge problem. They have a lot of resources, very little cash. We have to stop enabling them by giving them cash. It's the one place where they're really, really hurting.